Hello everyone, and welcome to the Mulligans Library. Today I'm going over the format that we have been developing for the last six months for the Digimon card game. We are calling it Digimon Partners. It is a multiplayer format that we have been testing that gives the game more diversity from the original way to play. We have tried and tested many different rules for this format, and these set of rules are what we finally settled on. So in this video, I will go over all the rules changes that had to be made, and why we have made those changes. Note that the rules here are constantly being tweaked, and this video will always be perfectly up to date, so please reference the rules document that I provided here. You can find that document in the description of this video, or in the community discord that I have linked as well. Speaking of the discord, if you would like to chat with others about deck building, gameplay ideas, or if you want to take part in the shaping of the future of this format, please join us there. Our goal is to have a community of players interested in the format, talking about it, and sharing their experiences. And now, onto the rules of the format for Digimon Partners. The first thing we should discuss is how to build a Digimon Partners deck. First, we chose to have each deck represented by a partner, that being a Mega Level 6 Digimon that would always be available to you while you play the game. We went with a Level 6 Digimon because we believe that Level 6s are what really define a deck's theme. With having more players, the game tends to go on a bit longer than a normal game, and knowing this we decided that 80 cards would be the deck size we're looking at. With the total amount of cards in the game and the number of growing archetypes, this number has worked well to balance that. The next change we made was setting the card limit to 2 instead of the normal limit of 4. This limit is due to the card pool size and how most cards want a specific theme when being put into a deck. To avoid decks being half on theme and half color filler, two copies works very well, while also making each game you play unique due to seeing different cards every game. Note that if a card says up to 50 in the text, this rule does not get changed. If you would like a Galactamon deck with 50 Vemmons or a Mother D Reaper deck with 50 Searchers, that would be fine. The Digitama have also been increased to be up to 8 eggs in a deck, and the limit for these copies are still at 4. Doubling the Digitama works for the increased deck size and game length, and we stuck with 4 copies because of the limited number of unique Digitama there are. As far as a ban and restricted list, we changed things just slightly there as well. We follow the official ban list for the game, so still no Mega Digimon Fusion. We do not currently have a restricted list, as cards are already limited to 2 copies, but we do have a specific ban list for the format. Those cards can be seen in the official document and on the Discord. Be sure to keep up with those changes as we are constantly testing cards and there may be changes in the future. As far as gameplay changes go, we only have a few changes to handle the multiplayer aspect of the game. Firstly, the starting hand has changed from 5 cards to 7 cards. This gives the players a little bit more to work with when looking at an increased deck size and more card limits. Next, we set the security starting at 10 instead of 5. We tested a few different security totals, and 10 ended up being a good number to mitigate a table from teaming up and deleting someone early. Also, this lets you play a little bit more loose and quickly without worrying about being deleted on the backswing. As for the memory system, this was actually one of the more easy things to translate into multiplayer. You have your normal system of two arms of memory, but we just expanded to have four arms total and having memory flow in a clockwise pattern as shown here. Note that if you gain memory on an opponent's turn, and that would end their turn, it would become the next player's turn in the turn cycle. The last game world changes for the partner mechanic. We decided that part of the fun for this format comes from the partner, and as such we wanted to make sure that they are always around. So if your partner were to leave the battle area for any reason, treat the card as going to that zone, then place it back in the partner zone. This includes being de-digivolved, bounced into the hand, being deleted and put into the trash, being removed as a digivolution card, being put under a tamer, or being put into the deck. Any effects will still trigger as though the Digimon was put into the zone it should have been put into. The partner does not leave the battle area if it was digivolved on top of or was part of a DNA digivolution. This does lead to a few partners being exceptionally stronger, always being around, and we have thought about limiting certain Digimon from being partners, but we have not made that decision as of this video. In this section, we will clarify how certain card mechanics change with having multiple opponents. First, we must clarify that the partner Digimon is treated as though it were in your hand for play purposes, but this card is not actually in your hand. It cannot be discarded, and if a card says hand, it will not be referencing the partner. This keeps in line some abilities that would be much stronger should you always have access to them as though they were in your hand. As such, cards with hand abilities will not work from the partner zone, as well as abilities that reduce cost or trigger when playing your partner from your hand. Next, we have to clarify how Bandai words their cards. Bandai have put a lot of emphasis on the single possessive opponent in their game. We wanted there to be some cards that were able to target multiple opponents without a blanket statement that all card affects all opponents. So we came up with a list of rules that define how a card can be played and why it only affects a single opponent or multiple opponents. 
The same is true for abilities that target multiple Digimon. We wanted some of these abilities to be split among multiple opponents' Digimon, but not all abilities deserve this power. So if you would like a comprehensive list, there is one available in the rules manual, as well as the list of reasons why each card is ruled in such a way. There are several other specific rules changes that won't be covered here, but if you would like to know how a specific keyword or ability is worded, those can be seen in the rules manual as well. Thank you for watching! If you are interested in seeing how a game is played, there will be a playlist with all the games we have played on the channel. Be sure to check back here for updates on the format, as well as more content we plan on releasing in the future. We hope to see you again at the Mulligan's Library.